Corner. If you're ready for Sunday school? Don't forget to like, share, and hit the su subscribe button down below. Before we dive right into our story time, here are your lessons. For my two to five year olds, you have this activity sheet and your story title is Joshua and Caleb. For my first to third graders, you have the same story title and this is what your activity sheet looks like. And for my fourth to sixth graders, you have the same story title as well and your activity sheet looks like this. Let's get ready for story time! God promised the people a new home in the land of Canaan. God told Moses to choose 12 men to travel and look at the land. Joshua and Caleb were two of the men. The 12 men traveled into Canaan. They saw the people and towns. They cut a branch with a bunch of grapes. Two men carried the grapes on a pole between them. The men also gathered other fruit from the land. After 40 days, the men went back to the people. The men said to the people, the land of Canaan is good for growing food. Look at some of the fruit. The men showed the people the grapes and other fruit. 10 men said, the towns have tall walls around them. The people are stronger than we are people became frightened and angry. Joshua and Caleb said, we looked at the land. The land is a good place to live and God will give the land to us. The people shouted and cried. They did not want to go into the land or do what God said. They chose to disobey God. God told Moses the people would stay in the wilderness for 40 years. Joshua and Caleb. Before the Israelite people moved into Canaan, God told Moses to send 12 men to scout out the land. Moses said to the men, find out what the land is like. Bring back some fruit. Are the people strong or weak? Is the land good or bad? Are the cities surrounded by walls? The scouts were gone for 40 days. When they returned, they brought back pomegranates, figs, and a cluster of grapes so big, two men carried it on a pole. The land is good, the scouts reported, but we also saw well-guarded cities, full of many people. We can't attack the people because they are stronger than we are. We are like grasshoppers next to them. The people cried and complained, Why is the Lord bringing us to this land to die? It will be better to go back to Egypt or die here in the wilderness. Two of the scouts, Caleb and Joshua, told the people, if God is pleased with us, he will bring us into this land. The Lord is with us. Don't be afraid. The people believed the other men and threatened to throw stones at Caleb and Joshua. God told Moses that none of the adults who disobeyed him, except Caleb and Joshua, would enter the land he promised. The disobedient people would live in the wilderness and the adults would die there. Their children would grow up and be shepherds. After 40 years, Caleb and Joshua and those who remained entered the land. Moses told the people what God said and they were overcome with sadness. We were wrong, they decided. Let us go into the land God promised us. Moses warned them not to go, but the people dared to enter the country anyway. When they did, the Canaanites attacked them and chased them away. And welcome back from story time. I hope you guys enjoyed your stories. Today's story was very interesting and very fun to learn about or to hear. And so we're going to dive right into our crafts. And the first craft that we are going to do is something dealing with grapes. So we know in our stories that the, Moses sent 12 men to go and scope out the promised land. They had to go see and he told them to bring them fruits, show them how the land is flourishing, how the land is producing and see if the people look strong, if they're protected. So 
the men had to travel 40 days to and from, 40 days to go and to come back. And they had to bring back fruits. And they had two, uh, had a stick, two men held a stick carrying grapes. So today we are going to mimic those grapes. What you're going to need is purple paint. And if you can't make, if you do not have purple, uh, I would advise you to look up a video on how to make <laughs> purple paint. It's not as easy with red and blue. Yes, red and blue works. I tried it, trust me. But it makes it look very murky. So look up a YouTube tutorial on, you know, some tips on making that right, that good purple paint. Red and blue is not just, you need to have more red than blue. And then it's a whole science to it so just look it up but if you can go out and get purple paint just go get the purple paint okay just I luckily I remembered that I had some so I stopped I was tired I was done I was on my second third cup of making purple and it, it just wasn't working but anyway you're gonna need purple paint toilet tissue roll yes it has paint already and I have my plate it looks messy because I was practicing white computer paper construction paper or cardstock paper and a marker black marker and a green marker for the vines let's get started all right so the first thing you're going to do now if you don't have the toilet tissue roll that's fine what i also did i took the cap of my paint if you have something that gives you a nice circle for grapes just use that i dipped this cap into the paint and i also stamped my grapes so let's try with the toilet tissue roll first and let me Go here I'm gonna dip it in the paint and let's see I'm gonna have my bunches go from this way okay so my vine will be up here and I'll start making my bunches now what you could do is have your child look at a picture of a grape let me turn this over and let them mimic that just to help them see what it would look like or what they can follow. This is actually looking really nice. Go ahead. All right, we, we, we're doing this, guys. Let me just add some more on the faded areas. And they will have fun with this. Ooh, get some glitter and sprinkle it. But you know, you don't have to because glitter could be messy, but it look nice. Okay, so now we have our bunches of grapes or our bunch. And you know what? Let me take the cap, dip it in the paint. Oh, I don't know if it will make a difference. I probably did too much of the big ones. I'm just gonna dot it around somewhere. All right. Let me put this back on. Now to make the vine. What you could do while we have the black marker, I should have said this first, I did this first. We are going to write on the construction paper or your white copy paper, computer paper. We're gonna write, I think we're gonna do the bottom. I'm just gonna say, trust God. Okay? And I can't remember where the story took place, but you can just also write the scripture verses of the story. They can put their names. Uh, if they want to say anything else, I'm going to put my name. I'll show the right way so you can see through this angle. Trust God. It's going to exclamation mark. All right, now we are going to draw the vines. And I always say, I am not an artist. I think the vines will stay green. But I will try my best. If you want, you could draw the vines first and then build your bunches. But I'm going to do this. One thick line. Come down the middle, make it thicker. I got some purple there, that's okay. Grab my paper towel, take off the purple. All right, let's do this really quickly. And 
and I need to just draw our leaves. Uh oh. Alright, hold on. Struggle bus, here we come. If you want to have pictures of the actual great leaves and let them see how it actually looks, that's fine as well. Uh, I think I'm going to just do that. It's nothing fancy, nothing big. What you could do, um, it looks kind of nice. It's not the best leaves, but I like my bunches of grapes, okay? And this craft is more so for two to five-year-olds, five-year-olds, but if you're first or second, first or sixth graders want to partake in this craft, that is totally fine. They can jazz it up however they like, all right? So this is it for our first craft. And now we're going to move on to the next thing. It's not a craft. It's really a, another object lesson. And this object lesson will be about trust, something that the children of Israel lacked, but something that Joshua and Caleb had. And they tried to convince the people that God can help us, that God will help allow us to defeat and get to the promised land. He will continue to provide like he's been providing all this time. We know the story. The children of Israel, they were slaves in Egypt. They got freed. Moses split the Red Sea, or God allowed Moses to split the Red Sea. And now they're traveling in the desert. He provided milk and honey, manna from heaven. God has always been faithful to them. And now it's time to move into the promised land. Moses sent the 12 men to go and scope out the land. That's why they brought the fruits back. But then the people got worried because the city, the the land looked strong and well protected and they got nervous. They saw with their eyes, oh my goodness, how can we conquer? But they forgot all the things that God did for them to get them to where they are. They were willing to go back to Egypt. Do you believe them? Sometimes that's how we are. So I'm going to have one demonstration to talk about trust. And this is what you're going to need. I'm going to do it this way. You're going to need a glass, or if you have a cup, that's fine, with water. And I filled mine up with two-thirds of water, two-thirds full of water. You're going to need an index card. Uh, I couldn't find any blank ones, and these are my old notes. Don't worry, I still have the textbook with the notes, so I can get rid of this now. Um, what else? Paper towel. And to take it up a notch, a volunteer, person with the, with the head. <laughs> All right, so now here, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take our index card. I hope you can see. Camera woman, can you make sure that it's seen if I'm down here? Okay, she says yes. We're going to take our index card and put it on top, now that it's filled with water, put it on top of our glass and make sure that the index card covers fully the rim of the glass and you're going to apply pressure now I suggest that you we're going to flip the cup now if you have a volunteer you can say okay come sit down and let's flip this cup over your head and let's see what happens like do you trust me do you believe that this water will stay inside the cup when flipping I would suggest you flip with your dominant hand whatever hand you feel comfortable with I feel comfortable Confident with my right hand, so I'm going to hold with my left and flip. Are you ready? Okay. <sighs> Let me clear out some space because if this messes up, guys, it's a lot of water that's going to spill out. Paper towel, handy. And the mop. Okay, ready? I'm putting pressure on the top, okay? I don't know if you can see, like, it's sinking in a little bit. You don't have to zoom in, it's okay. All right. <sighs> One, do I trust that this water won't fall out? <laughs> Two, three, let's flip it. Okay, some water is spilling out of the cup. You see it dripping a little. Now, here's the harder part. Oh, oh, 
oh, somebody moved too much. If it messes up, I'll just do this again. I'm afraid. <laughs> One, two, <laughs> Venus grabbing the camera top. Three. <gasps> oh my goodness. I didn't literally thought this was going to fall. Oh my gosh, guys. What happened? I released my hand and it seemed like all the pressure that I was applying now is inside the glass and it's sucking up the index card. All right. Now imagine doing this over somebody's head. Woo, would they trust you? Now who can tell me what is trust? You gotta tell mommy and daddy or whoever's the adult with you. Tell them what you think trust means. And if you don't know, I'll tell you. Trust, oh, should I give you a minute? You got it? You give up? Okay. Trust means to have confidence in someone or something. Having confidence in the ability or confidence in someone's word. Or in this case, trusting in God that he will follow through. That he will give you, give the children of Israel what they need, what he promised them. Having confidence, that's trust. Whether you have trust in mommy and daddy, you have confidence that when daddy says, when we come home, we're gonna go take to the park and ride the bikes. You have trust in your father to say, yay, I can't wait till daddy comes home. We're going to the park all day. We're going to the park, we're going to the park, we're going to the park. And as so as far as daddy comes home, and what do you do? You go to the park to ride your bike. Confidence. You're so excited because even though it didn't happen yet, you know it's going to happen, right? And that's what the children of Israel needed. They've seen it happen before. Milk and honey from rocks. Manna from heaven. Food from heaven. You didn't go to the store. You're in the desert. But all they needed was trust just to be able to go into the promised land. And because they didn't have trust, because they didn't believe that even though the water looks like it's about to drop out, you're still confident that it won't fall. It won't spill on top of the, that person's head. You're so confident that we can conquer that land because this is what was promised to us. This is what was told to us. All right? So trust means to have confidence, to have let me break down that word even more. To have confidence, to have, you can say hope, okay? I don't know if you guys know what hope means, but parents, help me out here. You can break down that word confidence. You, you trust, you are confident, I'm struggling here. You know that it's going to happen. I know that I know that I know it's going to happen. I believe it. Okay, that's what trust means, to have confidence. And mom and dad, you can probably do a better job than me right now and just dig deeper, dig deeper with trust and confidence and make them understand. Make them understand how what it means to trust in God and also trust in your family, but most importantly, trusting in God because God will never leave us. He will never forsake us. He will never let us down, even when it looks like it's about to pour on top of your head. Okay? And even if it does pour, you still know that God has you, that he's got you. Okay? And you are not too young to understand what trust means, or you're not too young to know how to trust in God. All right, friends? And this is our object lesson. I purposely held this glass up to show that this is still holding. I'm amazed right now. This is really cool. Please do this. Send me videos, post it on Facebook, post it on YouTube. You can follow us at The Triumphant Church of God. Uh, if you go on Facebook, actually you could just tag up, tag our names, our name. And if you go on Instagram, you can also tag us too at triumphant.youth. But let us see. If you have, if you know me personally, you could just send me a video of your child doing it as well. Or any of the Sunday school teachers. We would love you to be a part of this. And see how your project or your object lesson came up. Came up. Guys, if you look inside, it's like the index paper pulled, is pulled in. 
I'm really amazed. <laughs> now we're dripping. Okay. Oh! Even though it's still leaking. Oh my gosh. It's still leaking out. But the paper won't drop. This is totally cool. Okay, I'm going to stop making a mess. I'm going to flip it back over and we are done. All right, guys. Till next week. Enjoy your Sunday. Bye.